Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. Today we've got a mixture of good and bad Star Wars news. Let's start with the latter and then we'll finish on a high. So this pertains to the sag after strikes. I've only really covered the big developments, obviously the writer's strike is over, but with the actors, that is still ongoing, but it may have just gotten way more dire. This comes from the rap.com, witching hour, studios to devote another week to resolve SAG strike or give up until January, January of 2024, so in two and a half months time. This coming week is judgment day and beyond that, if negotiations don't go well, this has extreme consequences on upcoming projects, which does include Star Wars shows. Studios are going to reconsider their schedules, even for completed projects. They may spread them out even more. So this idea that we're getting lots of content in 2024 could very well be an exaggeration at this stage. We do know for certain the Bad Batch Season 3, as well as the Acolyte and Skeleton crew are set for 2024, but one of those could get moved, just to spread things out, and to prepare for the worst case scenario that the strikes affects 2025 content as well. Because keep in mind, the Acolyte and Skeleton crew have filmed, but Andor Season 2 was disrupted close to the end of filming, but they still haven't finished and they haven't resumed since the strike started. And we don't know when that's going to be. Production cannot resume until an agreement is reached between the actors and the studios. And so, if it doesn't happen next week and it's all pushed back to January of 2024, it's very possible Andor Season 2 doesn't see the light of day for another couple of years. And that sounds scary. If the latest reports are to be believed, The Mandalorian Season 4 is not going to be affected because filming does not start until later in 2024. So even if talks get pushed back to January, surely by the fall, production on shows should resume. Well, let us see what the rap.com say. The various studios believe that if they can't reach a deal next week with the Screen Actors Guild, which has been on strike since July 14th, then no new production will be able to start before 2024. If that is the case, the studios further believe that the full television season is lost, and with negotiations being pushed back to possibly January, that means that no production will start, best case scenario, until spring or summer. And that is granting negotiations are successful. They could sit down in January and still not reach any agreement, and then another meeting could be scheduled for April, and so on and so forth. This could go on for quite a while, delaying the production of a significant amount of shows and films, both for Star Wars, but across the board, Netflix, Warner Brothers, you name it. And I suppose the thing that is very odd is that studios on the one hand keep saying we need these actors to get back to work, but on the other, they're saying they're willing to move negotiations to January, which doesn't sound far away, only a couple of months, but the consequences that's going to have on schedules are huge. The CEOs from four of the major entertainment conglomerates, Disney's Bob Iger, Netflix's Ted Sarandos, Warner Brothers' David Zaslav, and NBC Universal's Donna Langley will meet anew on Thursday with sag after President Fran Drescher and Chief Negotiator Duncan Crabtree Ireland and their legal teams in an effort to reach a contract. The negotiations restarted this week on Tuesday, after the CEOs walked away two weeks ago over a new demand that sag to receive a $1 per subscription fee from streaming divisions on top of raises and other benefits that had been negotiated between the two sides. The studios considered that proposal, along with the two previous ones seeking a percentage of all streaming revenue as a non-starter. Meanwhile, the CEOs who are negotiating on behalf of the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers presented their counteroffer to the Guild on Tuesday. The Guild decided to skip further bargaining on Wednesday so they could discuss the offer. There are some who believe the meeting next week is going to be positive, and there is so much at stake with the outcome of that meeting. It could go either way. I think what a lot of Star Wars fans are worried about is the quality of Andor Season 2. Is the story going to be affected? Let's just say when it does get back into production, is it going to be rushed? Are they going to have to cut some things? Whatever they've not filmed yet, is that going to be condensed and therefore the rest of the story be disjointed? The first season was really an anomaly. Tony Gilroy had way more creative control than what Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm typically afford showrunners. The writing was very much unfiltered and now there are doubts season 2 is going to get the chance to do that. We know it's the final season of the show, it was originally a 5 season arc and now it's 2. They may decide to just use what they've got, cut it up and edit it so it's somewhat coherent, but the quality would definitely be affected. It would not meet the potential for the original plans for the season and the 24 episodes that completes the Rogue One prequel. And considering how groundbreaking season 1 was, that would be a darn shame. In an ideal world, a deal would be met, the actors get paid fairly, and production can resume. 
According to Carl Sola, who was involved in the first shoot for season 2, he plays the famous Cyril Khan, the second season is quote, turning it up to 11. There was so much confidence from the actors and Tony himself. And when speaking to Collider, he dished out a bunch of spoilers. We're gonna see Yavin, some more returning faces from Rogue One, and season two was building off the momentum from the first and completing these five years of the timeline in style. Kyle Solo said, quote, there's just more people, more planets, more worlds, and he teased there were more rebels, new ones we've never seen. It sounds amazing, let's keep our fingers crossed. And while we're on the subject of delays, Ubisoft may have just postponed a large-scale game believed to be Star Wars Outlaws to the next fiscal year. So originally they promised March of 2024, but now it's going to come later. But we do have some more positive gaming news. Star Wars Dark Forces is getting a remaster very soon, early 2024. All 14 original levels of the 1995 game are being given a new lease of life. The original was the first Star Wars first-person shooter, where players stepped into the shoes of Kyle Katarn, a character many fans want to see come into canon. Some attributes of the character have been applied to Cal Kestis, Cassian Andor, but he himself has not been made canon, even though he has also appeared in Galaxy of Heroes. As a defector of the Galactic Empire who then became a mercenary, Katarn discovers the Dark Trooper project in his investigations. And again, this is something we might be seeing in canon with what's going on on Mount Tantis in the Bad Batch. Phase zero of a multi-wave project that results in Gideon's Dark Troopers by the time of Mando, but there were earlier prototypes. During the investigations in the game, if the Empire is successful, this is bad news for the Rebel Alliance. The remaster allows for 4K resolution on all the major consoles, including quotes, upgraded gameplay, textures, enhanced lighting, and rendering. Kyle is a character I would love to see adapted. His history began long before the Dark Forces game, when he was working with his family on the mining planet Solus Moon, Solon, and the death of his mother pushed him to join the Empire. It wasn't until his graduation that he learned his father was also killed, and he was told the Rebel Alliance was responsible. The reality is that it was the fault of the Empire, and when Kyle learned the truth, he defected to become a soldier and spy for the rebels. There, he foiled the Dark Trooper program and eventually learned he was force sensitive. This set him on a new path where he learned from masters like Mara Jade and Luke, and in the decades that followed, he too became a Jedi Master. There is so much more to him, he had a brush with the dark side as well. However, for the sake of brevity, all I'm saying is, if you haven't done so, I recommend you play this game if you possess one of the consoles this game is being remastered for. And so finally, just to finish, a quick word from the client himself, legendary filmmaker Werner Herzog, who says we should not dismiss Star Wars as new mythologies. He talked about the potential of Jon Favreau and said that we shouldn't dismiss the message that Star Wars and The Mandalorian specifically tries to impart, largely about found family. But with that said, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of today's Star Wars news update. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the Force be with you, always.